All right, now that the thrust testing is completed, I'm gonna go through the components I'm gonna be using for this build. As noted before, I wanted to go for the maximum thrust possible. So I'm using these 66 millimeter FPV race props with the 10,000 KV 11L3 motors. You can see I've already gone ahead and roughly wired some things up. Um, we have a four on one ESC here. And this is a F3 flight controller that comes with it. Kind of a racer cube combo, they call it. Got this from my RC Mart. Then I'm going to be uh, running this with the DSM 2 receiver. And then this is just a prototype frame I cut up. Uh, there's a few extra holes here around the motor mounts. I've designed up these little uh, propeller protectors in case I ever decide to fly this indoors or somewhere where I want some protection on the props. Those can be added pretty quickly. Okay, now I've got everything roughly wired up and uh, mounted on a frame. Before I invest much time in a build, I always like to make sure all the electronic components are working properly and then I can interface with them uh, with the computer. Uh, for reference, here's the flight controller I'm using, F3 Racer Cube from my RC Mart and uh, some of the connections. It's not really the best documented board, but the connections are diagrammed here and you can pretty much work from there. This flight controller comes with Betaflight pre-installed. This is the first time I'm using it, but it's uh, not much different from Clean Flight from what I can tell. And then we can connect to the board. Okay, everything seems to be working properly in the setup tab. Drop down to the ports tab and you can see I've used uh, UART3 to set up the Serial RX on. And then in the receiver section of the configuration tab I have a serial based receiver spec sat uh, selected and the Spectrum 1024 for the DSM2 receiver I'm using. And up here I've left one shot 125 selected. <clears throat> the uh, ESCs are supposedly capable of D-shot, but I'm going to wait until I get this thing going before I mess with changing that. And then the PID tuning, I've left this stock to start, up the rates a little bit. Alright, now the receiver section. Turn my transmitter on and make sure that everything is responding properly. Yep, everything looks good there. And in the modes tab, I've disabled most things. I'm using a switch currently to arm and have it set up for a beeper, although I don't have one attached to the electronics yet. And then the motors tab, this is where most of the checking is going to be done. We'll make sure that the motors are all working properly. It's going to confirm all the ESCs are working and uh, also can check motor rotation direction here. Now I did try to calibrate these ESCs in the traditional way of applying full throttle and then giving uh, power to the ESC board and all that did was give full throttle to the motors so I don't really recommend doing that with this board. I'm assuming since it's a 4-in-1 it probably doesn't require calibration. If anyone knows how it's done, if it needs to be done, please leave a comment. Alright, now the flight controller is also hooked up to a power supply that I haven't switched down yet. I'm going to go ahead and do now. And then we can just check this box here, make sure all the propellers are removed. I haven't installed them yet. And then we can go ahead and spin each motor up. There's the first one. Second one, third one, and the last one. I'm going to go ahead now and just check the direction to see the quads facing forward here. So I want these two uh, forward ones rotating inward and from the back of the quad also rotating inward. So just check them individually. I just have a little piece of paper here. It's often tough to visually check so I like to put a paper on the motor when it's spinning that one looks like it's going in the right direction this one here now that one is not going in the right direction number three that one looks good and then number four 
That looks like it's going in the right direction. So it's just number two is the only one that uh, I need to adjust. But everything seems to be working properly, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, tidy this build up and uh, cover some of the things that I'll be doing. All right, I'll start out by uh, covering the connections that need to be made here. Right now, all the wires are much longer than necessary. I'm going to be tightening everything up and uh, removing some of the connectors. See, here's the satellite receiver connection. I have this going to the bottom of the board. This will be moved to the top side. Um, this is shown there is a little DSM note right here so you know which connection is for the DSM and then there's the voltage and ground in that order and they're actually different than they're oriented on the receiver so a couple of these wires have to be crossed uh, and then this says lipo power in right here it would be nice if they ran that on the connector here say from the wiring harness there's actually one wire short and that was for 5 volt power but this obviously doesn't have 5 volt power so um, they left one wire off that and you have to run separate wires for the power so it's a little bit of an inconvenience but uh, not too bad would be nice if they put it in there though just make things a little a little bit cleaner uh, and then the power on the bottom side of the ESC comes in there I've already soldered that and then the wires obviously from the motors go to the Three connections on ESC, on each ESC. And I think that covers all the connections. It's pretty straightforward. Um, go ahead and cover how things are going to be mounted to the frame. Now I'm just going to be using some 256 screws and stack up O-rings to try to get a real low stack build. Now these uh, four-in-one ESCs will often come with their own standoffs, which this one I have did. Um, I have a spare one here. I'm just for demonstration show how much uh, there's quite a generous clearance left between the frame and the ESC, uh, especially on like a 2S build where I don't expect a lot of heat build up. I think we can really drop that down a lot more without really having any risk to the components. Also, the the spacing between the the ESCs and the flight controller. As long as there's a decent gap between there, I don't think there's going to be any problems. So I'm going to be removing this connector uh, during my build as well. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting these screws into the frame. Now if I just run them through like this, we're going to end up with the heads exposed on the bottom side. And I really like a nice flat surface to mount the battery to. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do try to protect this carbon surface a little bit. I'm going to trim the head off of all these screws and just super glue them right into the frame. If one ever breaks, I can always drill it back out. This is obviously not required, but how I'm going to try to achieve a low stack height. Just run a bit of super glue around the base of each screw. Pretty generous amount there. Let that soak right into the wood in the frame. I'll do that with all four. All right, now that the screws are secured into the frame, I'm just going to go ahead and add a little measure of protection against any shorting. On the bottom side of the ESC board is where the battery connection is made, so we really want to make sure that it doesn't short out against any of these cut edges on the carbon. The, everything's going to be oriented like this because I don't want the uh, ESC connections covering over the bat where the battery strap goes. So it'll be oriented like this. And this will be the back. I'm just going to add these, these connections are going to be very close to the, the, the frame here. So I'm going to add another layer or two of tape, electrical tape, just to make sure that, you know, during crashes and things, this doesn't end up shorting out at all. So we have three layers of tape right where the, the battery connection is. Really minimize any chance of having problems. Okay, now we can start setting the components on the, the screws here. I'm going to go ahead and use some number four 
O-rings to start out. Space the ESC board away from the, the frame. Hopefully these are enough. Nice gap visible between there still. Between the, the board and the, the frame. There's not much. But I think that'll be fine. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do to really lower this stack down, I'm going to get rid of this connector. It's also going to be reducing a lot of airflow over the ESC, so we might as well get it out of there. Not really necessary. This is a tough one. I just end up having to cut the, get the connector right away here. Start going to town on that. There we go. Oh, and it's labeled right underneath it. That's nice and convenient. Try to estimate how long I'm going to need these wires. I have to come up from here and then be able to flip around and go into that other connector. So I probably want them about that long. Should work. And right, now that I've got the wires and pads tinned up here, go ahead and make these connections quick. Okay, that was a little bit uh, tight there, getting in and hitting those points, but uh, all went pretty well. It looks like that should be ready to just flip around and connect right up to the flight controller. And now we're going to add a few more O-rings. I don't think just one number four is going to be enough between the boards. I think I'm going to try to use one number four and one number three and see how that goes. Alright, so now I have one of each O-ring installed, and then I'm going to try to weave the flight controller up around here, get that installed. Oh yeah, and there's a, still a decent gap between those boards. I think that'll be okay. Even when those O-rings compress down, nothing is coming close to really touching or anything. I, I can always add a layer of electrical tape in there if I get worried about it, but I think it's going to be just fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and add one more layer of O-rings. Okay, you know, here's the board with O-rings on top. You see one of the reasons I didn't remove this uh, connector on the flight controller is because we're going to have to have room for the... Um, receiver on here and that does add some thickness which puts it right about at the same height as this connector so by removing that it's not really going to lower the stack at all so I've opted to leave that on at least for now. I um, mean this this uh, connector on the SAT RX is going to be coming off next. Alright now I've disconnected the satellite receiver with these uh, longer than necessary wires and this larger than necessary connector and on these ones I found you can just trim Generally, these back three pins. Yeah. Once those three pins in the back are trimmed, usually these pop right off. Ah, there we go. And right, now I've soldered a reasonable length of wire to each one of the connections here. Added a little bit of uh, this thin, double-sided, this is more like a carpet tape. There's no padding on this. I'm just going to go ahead and mount this right on top of the flight controller. Here seems like a good spot. I still have plenty of room to get over and make those connections. Okay, now you can see I've shortened the wires up and tidied that up nicely so the flight controller and uh, receiver are almost one piece now. And the thickness is pretty much e equal with that connector and the USB. A little thicker than the USB, but pretty much the same as this connector, so we haven't really increased the thickness any. And that can just be positioned down on here. And the next thing I'm going to do is shorten up these longer than necessary power wires and we'll get the motors mounted. 
Okay, now that the power wires are tidied up, it's time to go ahead and start attaching these motors. And I'm just going to be using some of these 5mm socket head. Uh, I think these are steel screws, but since they're only 1.6mm, they're still pretty light. Wasn't able to find aluminum ones in this size. And just go through and attach each one of these quick. Alright, I've got two screws installed into each motor and I've torqued these down pretty good. Now in my experience, Loctite doesn't always hold the best to the anodized aluminum. So what I like to do is just take some super glue. I actually glue the heads right to the frame and I've never had a problem breaking one of these loose, but it really does keep them from vibrating loose in flight, which has been a problem for me with some of my uh, higher KV builds. Just get a nice bead around each one. Okay, so we're just down to the last few things now. I'm going to go ahead and shorten all the motor wires. I can plug the ESCs into the flight controller at any point now. I think that'll allow a little bit more air flow through the gap there. Having that connector gone. And I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect each motor, trim the wires, and then reconnect. And uh, then the build should be about complete. Okay, now with the uh, motor wires shortened up, I added some uh, little micro rubber bands over the frame just to kind of keep them down tight, keep them from vibrating. Uh, the battery strap or the battery wiring connector may be a little on the long side, but I can always trim that up later if need be. I'll probably end up trimming these screws down, but for a line of sight test build uh, or test flight, it should be fine to go. So I'm going to add some propellers to wrap this up. Okay, I went ahead and strung a battery strap through the frame. Now I'm going to install the propellers. I've drilled these out slightly oversized with a 16th inch drill bit. What I'm going to be doing is actually uh, just applying a slight bit of super glue to the inside of each hole with a needle. I like to smear it around pretty evenly. And these are essentially going to be getting glued right on and then if I do need to remove them, you know, if they get damaged in a crash or whatnot, I'm probably just going to be clipping them off. I found already that these motor shafts aren't too hard to dislodge from the motors so trying to pull these props off is probably going to end up being a nightmare so I'm just going to end up clipping them off with clippers. Everything should be good to go. Nice complete build. Get an idea of the weight here. We're looking at 33 and a half grams.